Hello everyone. In this screencast, we're going to look at accelerating a signals processing workload using a variety of numerical computing technologies. Uh, we're from Jupyter Notebook, we're working in Python all the time, but underneath the hood, we're going to use lots of interesting uh, hardware. So we're going to use NumPy, we're going to use Numba uh, for, for compilation, we use DAS for parallel computing, and we'll use CuPy and CUDA later on uh, when we engage a GPU or many GPUs. I'm going to start off first with my laptop. This is a MacBook Pro. Later on, we're going to move off to a DGX, which is a machine with eight GPUs attached to it that I'm SSH'd into. First, let's look at an application. So I'm imagining something where we're pulling off some, uh, some image data off some detector. Uh, then we're going to smooth that. So I've written a simple Python function here to do some smoothing. So for every output point, we're sort of taking all the, the neighboring input points and averaging them. Then we're going to you know, save that file with some other file name, although we're not doing anything here. This is very much a toy example, uh, but you can maybe imagine some of your own systems uh, in this. We'll also take an FFT along the way and make a function for that because NumPy already has one. Let's go ahead and run this at first. Uh, this is going to be really, really slow because we're using Python here to do computation. Uh, but it's running. Uh, this is just sort of our, our baseline point. Lots of computations have a lot of custom Python code in them. Lots of them are slow. This might be where we're starting off with. So we're running this five times on 1,000 by 1,000 images that runs in around 13 seconds. First, this might be fine. You might be totally fine with this performance. Uh, we should only accelerate things if we need better performance. Based on our problem spec, this might be enough. But let's assume it's not, and let's start accelerating things. The first thing we can do is we can accelerate this code. This is pure Python code. It's going to be very slow. Python is not a good language for numerics. We need to send this off to something else. Uh, you can find implementations of this uh, operation in libraries like SciPy or Scikit-Image. Uh, we're actually just going to stay with the same Python code, but we're going to use Numba to accelerate it. So the first library we're looking at is Numba, and Numba is a JIT compiler, meaning that if I have a function like smooth, I can call numba.jit on it. That makes me another function. We'll call it fast smooth. So I can call this fast. So I, if I call smooth on an array, so let's make an array here. Uh, so we have this image, we're gathering it from detector, and we're going to call smooth on that image. And we're going to time how long that takes. And then you know, that's Python walking through all those things. It takes a couple of seconds, not the fastest thing in the world. Now if we call fast smooth on that image, it's going to be a lot faster. And indeed, it ran in 300 milliseconds. So that's a you know 10x faster than what Python did. And actually, so number is a JIT compiler meaning that it is compiling our Python code into something called LVM, and then running that uh, as we need it. Most of this time was actually just compiling. So if you run it again, that compilation is already done, and it runs much, much faster. So here we're getting now you know, two orders of magnitude or even, even faster. And so if I, uh, here I was being sort of very explicit about uh, calling number JIT on smooth. I can you know, replace this with fast smooth if I wanted to. But actually, what's more common is to use numbajit as a decorator. So I'm going to decorate my function with this at symbol. So now if I run it, previously it took 13 seconds. Now it takes 300 milliseconds. And again, most of that was compilation. It's only 200 milliseconds total. And so now if I want to, it's pretty easy for me to go not for 5, but for 100. And let's just remove this print statement. Not any of that kind of debugging. So there. Numba is definitely, this is the fastest speed boost we're going to get for a while. We increased our data by a factor of 10, and we decreased our computation time by you know, a factor of 4 or so. So Numba is great. Uh, it's definitely a highly productive tool. It allows people who are used to writing sort of C or Fortran-like numeric code in Python without experiencing the performance loss. Okay. So next, we're going to look at parallelizing this with Dask. So Dask is often used to give you sort of big NumPy arrays or big pandas data frames. We're actually not going to use that functionality today. We're going to just parallelize these functions and run them on many cores on a laptop. So I'm going to clear out some of this number code. And I'm going to start up a, a Dask client. Oh, and a local cluster. So often when we use Dask, we connect to some remote cluster. We might have a, an HPC machine that runs something like, like Slurm or SGE or LSF. 
uh, or we might have a Kubernetes cluster or a Hadoop cluster. And we would then use something other than local cluster here. But we don't have any of those things right now on my laptop. So instead, I'm just gonna make uh, a bunch of workers on my local machine. And that's just gonna use all the cores that I have on my laptop. So let's go and look at those for a moment. Uh, DAS comes with this nice uh, dashboard that will allow us to see what's going on. I'm gonna arrange my windows, my JupyterLab session here. Whoops. This will be nice as we as we see some performance differences. So right, I've got four workers, each of them have three threads. On a MacBook Pro, it has 12 uh, logical cores. So I have to change my code a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, rather than run these functions locally, I'm going to submit them to run on my DAS cluster, which again is just my local machine currently. But we can at least use all the cores I have on my machine. So we're going to use the concurrent features interface in Dask. Dask has many um, interfaces. Concurrent features is a, it's a nice way to just to submit lots of Python functions that depend on each other. So I'm going to submit this function gather from detector that'll run on some process. I'm going to call the function smooth on the results of that. Uh, and I'm going to call uh, FFT2 on the result of that. Uh, this is a little bit different. So this can make a future and we're going to call fire and forget uh, just so the DAS doesn't clean it up for us. Uh, so let's see if that run ran. Yeah, there we go. So we just ran 100 tasks, not in three seconds, but in 300 milliseconds by using many cores on our laptop. So here we're seeing the Dask task stream and we're seeing uh, all the different uh, threads that I have running on my machine, all the different cores, and what they've been working on over time. So every horizontal line here corresponds to one core and every little box here corresponds to some NumPy function or some Numba function. We can see sort of a, uh, a time series of what they were working on over time. So this one gathered data from detector that took 25 milliseconds. Then it called FFT2, it took 89 milliseconds. Then it called gather from detector again, adding a new image. It called smooth on both of them, etc. We can even see here the, the JIT compilation time on each of the uh, threads as they were starting up. Uh, so we get so, a nice, nice experience here. And again, this means that we can easily bump up our, our data size by a you know, factor of 10 and still get within the same rough uh, performance uh, that we were sort of expecting. So let's go a little further. And so let's say this wasn't just that I have a thousand images. Let's say I want to do this real time. Maybe I have a detector that's actually running. I've got actual hardware that I'm playing with. Let's go ahead and make a, um, uh, an asynchronous function. So uh, Dask uh, is built on Tornado, which is an async framework in Python. It's very common. And it works very well with async and await style workloads. So let's make a function, async def. And while true, we're just going to do all of these things. And then we're going to uh, just sleep for a bit. Uh, let's give it five seconds. Uh, great. So this is going to run in the background. I could have done this in a thread if I wanted to. I just sort of prefer async IO just because it's a little bit, um, a little bit nicer with modern Python today. So it's going to run, and that's just going to, you know, run in the background as we're, as we're playing around. So we have access to our Jupyter Notebook session. Everything is still fine, but in the background we're just doing a bunch of work. Um, that's actually not coming anywhere close to saturating our machine, let's maybe run another one of those, but now five times more frequent. And now we're seeing we're getting actually some, some use out of our machine. So every 10 milliseconds, we're firing off a new image from our detector, and it's doing all those things. Uh, if I happen to have other resources available, uh, I might uh, ask for more resources. So I've got four processes running now. Maybe I would double the size of my machine, and I would, I would ask now for more workers. So DAS can uh, handle that kind of dynamic scaling, and it's quite nice. Again, especially if you have you know, a big Kubernetes cluster nearby or a big HPC machine. But this is what we like to see. We've got a bunch of data coming in constantly, and we're able to handle that data in a nice, little balanced way, all only by writing you know 10 or 20 lines of Python code. This is running at full performance of my machine.
So that's that's really highly productive and highly efficient. You get the best of both worlds. Okay, so I'm going to stop this now. I'm going to switch to get another order of magnitude improvement by using a bunch of GPUs. Uh, I'm going to just, uh, in the, for the sake of my laptop, which is now the fan is going strong, I'm going to kill this while we move over to the other machine. Okay, so this notebook, you'll notice, is on a different machine. I'm now on a, on a DGX1. This is a fairly expensive machine. It has eight uh, V100 Tesla cards, uh, which are each fairly powerful, uh, fairly powerful GPUs. And I've changed my code a little bit. So previously, where I used to use NumPy, I'm using a library called KuPy. KuPy looks and feels just like NumPy, but it runs on the GPU. Uh, some operations are, you know, two or three hundred times faster. Some operations are, you know, ten times slower. So you definitely need to think about what you're using. Things we're doing creating random numbers and doing FFTs, which GPUs are really, really good at. So we're going to be a lot faster with the GPU. Also, my number code has changed a little bit. If we look back at our previous code, it was this very simple uh, sort of double for loop style, very familiar with someone who knows Fortran or C. Uh, now we're writing CUDA code in Python using number.cuda.jet. And so if you're familiar with CUDA code, this should look really familiar too. If you're not, it's not that hard to learn. Actually, being in Python makes it a really pleasant experience. Don't think about compilers. Don't need to think about you know, runtime environments. It's all sort of handled there for you. So this code is, is changed from what we had before, but it's, it's very similar. Uh, and it is all high level. Uh, additionally, rather than using my local cluster before, I'm using local CUDA cluster. All this does is it creates one task worker per GPU on my machine. Um, and it sets up environment variables so that every worker is looking at the right GPU. It's going to set up my environment again. I know, I might be uh, missing out on, oh, it's just taking a little while. There we go. Yeah, so let's just reload these. So I have eight GPUs on this machine, uh, and I'm just allocating one thread per GPU. We're not going to use a CPU at all. That is going to be created, processed, and spilled out just using the GPU. So we don't need the, the CPUs on this machine. Uh, so I can do the same thing I did before. Um, and it's the exact same code here. Let's go ahead and run this. So these are my 100 GPUs. Uh, and we ran those 100 very quickly. Let's you know, bump up to 1,000. There we go. That's taking a, a little bit more time. Um, yeah, so the FFTs are now taking you know, 12 milliseconds. Smooths are taking you know, 4 milliseconds. We're getting a bunch more performance out of this. Let's, uh, let's increase the size of our array a little bit. So from 1,000 to 1,000, 10,000 to 10,000. I switched to float32. GPUs tend to have a bit more compute power in sort of the lower ranges. Um, these particular GPUs are also fine on Flow64, but it's a little bit nicer on them. So let's run that. So we're now increasing the data size by a factor of 100. Uh, and again, you know, we're sort of processing through all of that relatively comfortably. So uh, let's go ahead and do the real-time thing as well. So this is running, again, with 10 times larger data sets. We're running every 10 milliseconds. And that's isn't even trying to use any more than three of the GPUs. Let's just run this function a few more times to keep that going uh, multiple times. So I've just run that five times. And now we're starting to use the GPUs, but even then you see lots of white space. There's lots of idle time here. So we have just you know orders of magnitude more compute power. Uh, and we're still not even saturating it. So again, that's the demo I wanted to show. And if you remember that we started this computation with you know, 1,000 by 1,000 arrays, and only five of them were able to process those five in around 13 seconds. Now we're processing, I don't even know how many um, much, much larger arrays in real time. It's, it's pretty satisfying. All of this was done with Python. All of this was done with libraries that are well trusted and well understood. All of these have been around for you know, many years now. Um, 
So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for your time.